first official episode here on Focus on Prayer. And today, today I wanted to talk about uh, kind of helping you jumpstart your prayer life. Maybe you're struggling, uh, entering in, you don't know what to pray. Maybe things are dry for you, whatever it could be. Um, I just have some tools that I've, I've gained from mentors, from classes that I've taken, and just my own personal journey um, that I've put together that has helped me personally engage with the Lord in kind of a super easy practical acronym that helps you push in and press in for more of the Lord. So um, I'll pray, and then we'll get after it. Father, I thank you for this time. I ask you to just encounter whoever is watching this, Lord, that you just use these notes, these things you've just given me and many others to help us engage with you more, Father. So we love you, and we thank you for all you are and all you, who you are and what you've done in our lives, Lord. So we love you, we thank you, in your son's name, amen. So uh, kind of I want to touch a little base before I got started. Which is kind of just breaking some like easy boundaries that just will make that time for you so much better. And the first thing is setting a place and a time and just showing up. It can be so easy for us to go about our day and not set aside time or just make time for other things. But if you want a relationship with the Lord, you need to, like anything else, what is important to you, you need to set a, set a time for it. So whatever, if it's morning, afternoon, night, whatever it is, makes you set a time. And every time you just show up, just show up. Because if you show up and you start engaging with him, he's going to show up. Um, and always one of the, one of the, my favorite things to, to like, I know I'm saying there's this acronym, like a list, but don't enter in with the, with your list. Come for him first. I think if you come for him first and then the acronym may not be that necessary because you're already entering in with him. But if you're still, if you're still dry after that, if you're just sitting there and sitting there, waiting and then maybe you know start pressing into these these um these bullet points i have but first and foremost come for him it's not about you it's it's about him it's coming for him and falling more in love with him and remembering that you have his ear i think it's important that we remember that he is listening these aren't just going up and just floating away into thin air they're they're going into heaven they're filling the bowls in the throne room filling the incense and in the throne room and remember that remember that you have his ear and just always be aware of that thing it's super important to know that and be confident that you have his ear because he is listening he's not just messing around he's he's there to intercede on our behalf and some before the acronym i just want to talk about apostolic prayers these are prayers that are written in the word and they're like glory ones every single one has just glory written all over it um, some of these is Ephesians 1, 16 through 19, Ephesians 3, 16 through 19, Philippians 1, 9 through 11. Um, hit those ones. Just These are prayers that are written in the Word. You can't get much better than that. When when they're prayers that are already in the Bible, it's it's right there for us to use. Um, it's, and it's, they're all super good. They're all, yeah, they're just, they're there. They're there for a reason. You know, we got to use those ones. I know I'd. I probably don't touch those ones as much as I should, but um, they're just super, super yummy. So now I'm gonna, we're going to get into the acronym that I was talking about, which is fellowship. So um, I'll just walk through it, each, each letter of it and tell you kind of what um, goes along with it. So F will be fear of God. So release the fear, spirit of the fear of God in my heart. And kind of some scripture along with that would be Psalms. 111 10 the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom all who follow his precepts have good understanding to him that belongs eternal praise Proverbs 9 10 the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding and this is my personal favorite one Proverbs 19 23 the fear of the Lord leads to life and he who has it will abide in satisfaction he will not be visited with evil I just think the fear of the Lord to begin with is super important um, to ask for the spirit of the fear of the Lord to come upon us. Um, like, I don't know, like in Proverbs 9, it, it, it's the, it leads to the beginning of wisdom and understanding. And I just think that the church at large needs to press in for more of the fear of the Lord. But um, anyway, back to the acronym E, uh, endurance. So strengthen my heart with endurance so that I am faithful to you. Give me patience and endurance in which Jesus walked. 
So some scripture would be Hebrew, Hebrews 12.1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So again, praying for, for strength, that we would run the race well, that we're not going to um, fall away, where we're going to continue with him and be with him and have that endurance to run the race well, because that's what it's about. There's no, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, you know, it's, it's, a, it's not about a one year thing, it's about our lifetime into eternity with him, so giving us that endurance to be with him. So the first L would be love, pour out your love in my heart by the Spirit so that I may overflow this love back to you and to others. I think that part's super important. Being able to know His love and do, in doing so, pour that out onto others and being able to not just love Him, but His heart is for, for people. So knowing that and taking that love, not only knowing it for yourself, but pouring it out onto others and just the way we treat people and that kind of stuff, you know what I'm talking about. So scripture, um, Proverbs 3, 3 through 4, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. That writing the tablet on your heart part. That's good. That's really good. Imagining like, I know it's etching in stone. Like you know that you're, his love is within you. And just, I, I don't know, something about that just gets me. All right, next one. I got two more. Uh, 1 Peter 4, 8, and above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Romans 12, 10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another. So again, just showing showing love, sharing, showing that to people when, um, and praying, praying from that place of love, not praying, oh, like these selfish things. Of like, oh Lord, I want help help my team win this game, you know, stuff like that, you know. But like, love, let's love these people and love these people around us. And the second L was light of glory. Let me see your light of glory and give me supernatural encounters. That's good. Come on, <laughs> Deuteronomy ten twenty one. He is your praise and he is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen. I noticed for me, just quickly, I have another scripture, but I think for me, it be, it became real when I began to see things. I I just I didn't have words to explain. I encountered him in ways I just I didn't have words for, and I felt I had this tangible encounter with him back in I think 2015, 2016 in the winter time, and since then, just the fire just lit upon me. I didn't I didn't have words for because I've, I've never felt that before. I didn't know. Um, it could be so tangible. I just felt the tangible presence, this tingling sensation come right to my heart and there's like warmth through my whole body. And I've seen, I've seen things I've never thought I've seen before. I've seen people healed. I've seen demons cast out. I've seen some things I would have never, and it's only him. That's my only explanation. I don't know how else to um, describe it. So just pressing in to see, to see these miracles, you know, and seeing him move. It's scripture says it says they're for today, which they are, in my opinion, and um, to press in to see for more of those things, see him, see him, his glory on display. And the second ver second verse here is Ephesians three twenty through twenty one. Now to him, now now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. It's kind of like a tail end of one of those apostolic prayers we were talking about earlier. Um, but again, just pressing in for his glory, praising him and honoring him for the smallest things and the biggest things. So the small um, miracles he does and the biggest miracles. You know, maybe it's providing rent or whatever it is. It's a small miracle or just the, the wild things of, you know, seeing cancer healed, seeing things healed or whatever it is, but, but praying like, I want to see these things because I want to see your glory on display so that my faith and my love for you will increase. So the, for the O is one thing. Remind me every day that I sit at your feet and build me 
and a desire to maintain a regular lifestyle, a regular time with you. Now, during this past year, I think my love for like the story of Mary and Martha really has hit me in like a new way this past year. My like, adoration for Mary, all she was focused on the one thing. She was focused. She had her eyes just on him. Where Martha, typical, oh, being Mary, not a, not a Martha thing, but she has to look at her life, look at Mary's life. I read this one book. It's called um, Adoration by Martha Kilpatrick, and it's just all about Mary's life. And it's so beautiful that just the way she just lays down her life for the Lord. She lays down her life to be at the feet of Jesus day in and day, not, day, day, in and day out. And you just see her just pouring her oil upon him, this expensive oil, because she's more concerned with, with him than anything else. And that, that is truly like, I, I want my heart to be like that. I want, I want my, my life with him to be like Mary. It's so cliche, but seriously, like, what else matters but being at his feet and adoring him and gazing in his eyes and, and hearing him and all of that stuff. So W would be worthy. Strengthen my heart so I can walk in faith and obedience that is worthy of who you are and your calling in my life. <coughs> Ooh. Excuse me there. <laughs> Revelation 4.11 You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Second Samuel 22, 4. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. And again, just recognizing who he is and what he's done in our life, the things he's done. And let us be reminded of his of how much we are worthy and how much he is worthy of our praise. That we we may not feel like, oh, like we've done X, Y, and Z. We we don't we don't deserve this, which is not true at all. And like understanding that and like praising him, yes, like you are worthy. You take you've taken me from where I have been to where I am now. You deserve so much praise. You brought me out of whatever it is. And you deserve all the praise because without you, I don't know where I'd be. I mean, even for my life, I don't. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. Like, I think about sometimes, like, where I'd be if I didn't go on the path that I did and where I'm at now. And it just blows my mind sometimes, you know? Um, I wouldn't nearly be where I am position wise, and I'm not sure what I'd be doing. But I'm thankful that He has touched me the way he's, he, came, he has come into my life. And, um, done what he has and I'm just confident what he's going to do within me and he just he's he's just so worthy I'm so worthy it's like in Revelation 4 I just they're just singing the same song holy 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 worthy are you and um yeah <laughs> next one is S is speech guard my lips help me speak words that are pleasing to you free me from impure speech these ones just self-explanatory you know but we just pray for our own for our own mouths that we're not saying things we shouldn't and stuff like that so to scripture ephesians 4 29 let no corrupt word proceed out of my mouth but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers psalms 141 3 set a guard O lord over my mouth keep watch over the door of my lips I don't know what else I add to that. <laughs> I mean, watching our speech is crucial. If we're speaking, even like beyond saying bad things about people or letting impure um, things come out of our mouth, like even speaking negatively over our life, um, speaking life into ourself is crucial. Speaking the word or things he's written over our life is only going to enhance our understanding of who he is and our love for him, you know? So speaking, speaking prophecies, speaking his word over ourselves is going to help us fall more in love with him because then we're coming in, we're coming into agreement with who he has called over our lives and we're, we're getting rid of all the things that the enemy is trying to speak over us, whether that's, we're not, we're not pretty enough, we're not beautiful, we're not good at this, we're not good at that, you know, and those are just lies, it's just the enemy trying to hold us back and let's look at our word. And find out where he says that we are who we are. Ask him who 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 do you say I am? And just begin to speak those things over ourselves. I I am 
X, Y, Z. I am qualified. I am worthy. I am all these things because of my relationship with you, Lord. Um, so yeah, so not just only speaking, um, watching our mouth and the explicit to whatever things we say, but like watching what we say to positively affect ourselves and people around us. And the H is humility. So teach me to set my heart to learn humility and walk in humility. In the verse for this, I have 1 Peter 5.5. 5. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourself, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I think it's always something in ministry and just in life I, I try to be humble because it can be so easy to be, bring comparison in when we're talking about ministries. Who's ministry is doing what? Who's what? Are, what? Are, what? 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 fruit have we seen and comparing all that and it's not that can so easily feel like get in the way but remembering to bring ourselves down go low go low and let humility come in and let that be the guiding force of it because it's not, it's never about us whatever whatever in ministry terms like it's about him it's about the kingdom it's about expanding the kingdom it doesn't matter what i do you know um there's a song oh it's called um, Missionary Anthem, and I forget the exact words, but um, it's by YWAM, if you want to search it, it's a great song, um, but it's talking about, I'm going to pass away, I'm going to die, but what is hap- what he has done through me to impact people, that's going to be remembered. I'm going to pass away, I'm going to fall away, but glory to him for what he's used me and how he's used me and the fruits of what he has done through me and the generations and all this stuff that has been... Um, impacted by how he's used me because if if i'm doing it myself there's gonna be fleshy things that are getting away and it's not gonna be pretty and it's gonna be messy and it's not kind of go gonna go over well so remembering it's it's for him it's for his glory it's not about my glory or anyone's it's for his so we've got two more insight would be the eye give me insight into your word provide wisdom about wailing int- intimately with you so the verse I have this for 1 Peter 4.13. But rejoice to the extent that you partake for, of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. And I think, and I think this past year, just again, I think the whole quarantine thing really brought me back to the word and just coming for him and like wanting to know more. I think the biggest thing is when you're studying scripture is to ask, ask questions. When you're in your quiet time, ask questions. Why in this scripture does it say this? Why does it say that? Why did he do this? Come and ask questions and just sit and listen and just ask for insight on it. You know, I think I love the, the Bible in the year thing is really awesome. Um, and I'm not going to say don't do it, but if there's a verse or a part of scripture that is just speaking to you time and time again. Go back to that and just sit there and ask for wisdom. If it's speaking to you, just don't move from there. Don't move. Just sit there and ask for more. Ask for revelation. And I think that's just super key in just developing that love for, for the word and love for him. And the last one is peace and joy, which peace and joy is two words, but oh well. Uh, <laughs> Just focus on the peace then. Strengthen my heart with supernatural peace in areas that are troubling. In scripture, Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 12, 12. Rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Psalms sixteen eleven. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So that's it. So that is the acronym fellowship. So it's fear of God, endurance, love, light of glory, one thing, worthy, speech, humility, insight, and then finally peace and joy. So again, that is kind of if you're struggling, getting something going, um, not sure what to pray, those are things you could easily just hit and just stick there. And if one sticking out more than the other ones, stick with that one. It just it's just a guide. That's that's all it is. It's just a guide to help um, push you closer to him and 
engage in the time of prayer um, that is just so needed and awesome that we have that relationship with him that we can do that. So hope that is helpful, guys. Um, hope it was good. If not, let me know. <laughs> I can I can improve and figure things out as well. So um, yeah, hope it was good. I know it's something I use a lot for my own life to help me press in when things are kind of rough and whatnot. So again, I uh, love you guys. Figure out what's next. We'll just keep the train rolling and figure out where it goes from there. So have a great day, guys. Peace.